In the summer of 2008, a country that shall not be named received a phone call from the Chinese government advising them against receiving His Holiness the Dalai Lama on an upcoming state visit. There was only one problem. The visit was secret. How could the Chinese have known? Well, the Dalai Lama turned to this team from the Information Warfare Monitor, the best of its kind, to help find the mole and neutralize the threat. And while James Bond had Q, who gave him the laser watch and, of course, the exploding pen, this team had Palantir. We gave them the ability to make sense of vast amounts of data and quickly differentiate between friend and foe. And what they found was truly amazing. The Dalai Lama did have a mole, but it wasn't human. They had been successfully targeted by Chinese spies, cyber spies. Using a technique called spear phishing, the Dalai Lama's computer infrastructure had been infected with a virus that gave the adversary control over their machines. So you may be familiar with phishing. This is the indiscriminate emailing of millions of people in the hopes of getting a few poor suckers to give up their login credentials. Spear phishing, as the name implies, is much more targeted. The adversary will research you, your interests, your friends, your behavior, and craft an email that plausibly comes from someone that you know. This email will have an attachment, a Word doc, or a PDF file. You'll open it, and you'll have been spearfished. The adversary now has control over your computer, which they can use to, for example, turn on your webcam to literally see and hear what you're saying in your office, send email to anyone as if they were you, and even exfiltrate data right off of your computer, including, as in this case, the Dalai Lama's negotiation position vis-a-vis -vis China, a very useful thing to have if you're the Chinese. Think about how much spy tradecraft has changed. If James Bond wanted to steal a dossier, he'd have to come crashing through the front door in his Aston Martin, wrestle some man-eating worms, break some gorgeous girl's heart, grab the goods, and get rescued by the CIA. <laughs> These guys literally took the goods while sitting at home in their pajamas. <laughs> but the already intriguing plot actually thickens. So the good guys, armed with a heroic amount of Red Bull, shaken, not stirred, uncovered a vast network of 1,300 computers in 103 countries that had been infected. The preponderance of these infections were against targets with interests in South and Southeast Asia, both countries and companies. This network, dubbed the GhostNet, had been active for two years and was highly active until the team made its existence public. So, as you can see, the face of espionage has changed. <laughs> as recent events with Google have highlighted, the adversary targets both countries and companies for both political and economic gain. Your automated intrusion detection systems and firewalls can't keep them out. The adversary is patient and adaptive, and most importantly, targets the weakest part of your network, humans. So the next time you get an email with an attachment, beware, there just might be someone sitting on the other end in their bathrobe, eagerly trying to steal your most sensitive IP. Don't bother calling James Bond. Call on the cyber spies. Thank you.